How's my family this morning? What are you laughing at, Buster? Oh, my goodness. Uh, I wish it was a ditch. How's the family this morning? Everybody good? Thank you, Nick. Y'all did a great job. We appreciate the music. Well, I told uh, the elders in my office, I, I have a uh, unique sermon this morning. And uh, we didn't uh, do the elder voting today, or the uh, vote on the budget. And uh, you'll understand there have been a lot of variables this week. Reggie's not very good with a computer, and he can mess things up better than he can fix things. So that's kind of part of what happened, so... Uh, no, I did call some people, but that didn't help me. <laughs> so it was me. You know, I'd like to start this message this morning with a statement. And that statement is, I've got a terrible problem. Thank God. Sounds crazy, right? I got a terrible problem, but I'm thanking God for it. Why would I be thanking God for my problem? Well, 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 3, if you join me there this morning. Second Corinthians chapter 1, beginning at verse 3. Praise be to the God and the Father, our, our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of compassion, and the God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our troubles so that we can comfort those in any trouble with the comfort we ourselves receive from God. The fact is, problems are just a part of life. We're all going to have them. At some time or another, we're just going to have problems. It's just a part of life. There was a preacher that was counseling a chronic complainer one day that shared that he had visited a place the other day where people have no problems at all. Oh, where would that be, asked the complainer. I would like to find that place so I can go there, the preacher replied. Go about a mile down this road, and you will see a cemetery. The people there are totally free of problems right there. Our problems are a good indication that we're alive here on earth, amen? And that God does allow problems in our lives from time to time. That right there is a great reason to thank God, amen? We're still here with our problems, right? Thank God we're alive. And that he provides us teachable moments in our lives. And he does that. The book of James confirms this. Without a doubt, if you'd join me there, James chapter 1, verse 2. James chapter 1, beginning at verse 2. Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. If any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God who gives generously to all without finding fault, and it will be given to you. Amen. Problems allow us to experience God's presence. Amen. So when we have problems going on, we tend to grow a little closer to God from time to time. We draw closer to God because we feel his love. And we want to feel his protection. This special, special intimacy with God becomes real in, the mo in our moments of desperation. When we find ourselves most desperate or in a bad situation, we find ourselves, even though you may not think it or you may, I do, that we're going to draw closer to God. Because we're in a little situation or we're in a mess and we need some help. And I think that's why God allows us to have problems and trials in our lives so we won't be forgetting him that we'll make sure that we're leaning on him and he is in our lives 
Psalms 46, chapter, uh, chapter 46, verse 1. God is our refuge and strength and ever-present help in trouble. Amen. So is there anyone here this morning that's never had a problem or gotten ourselves in trouble? Good. Don't point at each other. That's not good. Now I want to tell you about my terrible problem that I had this week. My terrible problem is me. I'm my own worst enemy. And <laughs> I don't need no help over here. I can do this by myself. This is, my, this is exactly like my skid steer. This one's a little cleaner and newer, but this is exactly like my skid steer. This skid steer here weighs 12,000 pounds with the bucket, around 12,000 pounds, which is approximately six tons that uh, I'm in every day, just about, or every other day, I'm working in that skid steer. I spend a lot of time in it. I know it very, very well, and, and I've learned to operate it very well. Terry and I, we have prayer every morning before leaving to go to work, every morning. And we pray for our family, and we pray for our church and our church family, but we pray for each other. We pray for God to provide the safety we need to get through the day, that we might be fruitful as we work through the day, but that he's right there with us looking after us. So I'm so thankful that we do that. So when I leave the house in the morning to go to work and she leaves, we feel like we've got God riding with us. We've got God's protection with us. And that's very, very important. And all of us should be doing that. I hope, hope you're on board with that too. So this past week, uh, Monday, past week, I had a job to do for Encore in Sherman. I had to build an entryway over a big, deep ditch with a culvert so they could get their trucks in and out and set poles. And on this road is a two-lane road, like a major highway that cuts across, and it's only two lanes, and the traffic is crazy on this road. So Encore uh, had me contact a company that would block traffic. You know how you go down these roads, and I'm one of them jerks that's got the traffic blocked. One lane, they got, they got to follow you through there. Well, that's what I was doing in Sherman. I also had to build a road for them up there so they could get around this one area and get their trucks back up in there. So I leave my house when I have to go to Sherman McKinney, anything on the other side of Dallas, I leave at 4.30 in the morning. Because I don't want to fight the traffic getting across Dallas. Because if you go any later than that, you're going to wind up sitting more than you are driving. So I leave at 4.30 in the morning. And if I'm getting up at 4.30 in the morning, I'm not going fishing. I'm not happy anyway. Right? <laughs> so I get up at 4.30 in the morning. And believe it or not, Bucky's is not far up the road on the other side near McKinney. So I get up at 4.30. I go to McKinney's, gas up my vehicle if it needs it. And then... I park in the parking lot, and I take a nap for about 30 minutes, right? Until, and what I was doing is waiting on the traffic crews to call me and tell me they were set up because they would not set up in the dark because it's not safe. They would wait till daylight, and they'd get set up. And then they were ready for me to come down there because I had to park my truck and skid steer on the side inside the cones. So make sure that my truck doesn't get hit and I don't get run over. And what I was doing there is uh, I was building a... Uh, a road that came in a little skinny gate. And when you came in the gate, you had to turn immediately and start going up this hill. Now, Encore puts power poles and undergrounds in some of the most crazy places you've ever seen. And this one was that way. And when you came in the gate, you had to turn quick because there was a 25-foot cliff right there that, that fell off in a creek. So I had to build it out a little bit so the, the dump trucks could continually come in and go up this hill. And I kept warning them truck, dump truck drivers, don't get over there too close to that edge. Because if you go off there, it's not going to be any fun. So we direct them in and out. And then I had to make sure the Encore trucks, because they have pole trucks that are about the size of dump trucks. And they're going to back in there and back up this hill and set their poles. Well, when I go to Sherman or when I go across Dallas, I want to try to leave over there by 3 o'clock. Because I know I can get back through Dallas and I can get all the way on the other side of Dallas without fighting that traffic. And when you're pulling six tons, you can't stop very quick. And people don't realize that. 
because they just cut right in on you and then stop and do all kinds of things. So it's unsafe. So, I, you know, I'm, I'm going to get back by 3 o'clock. That is my goal to do. So I got my job done. I got the dump trucks in and out really good. I'm just cleaning up because I like things to look really nice, even, even though they're backing trucks over it. I just kind of scraping the ground, cleaning it up, and backing down this hill. Well, I backed off that cliff. I didn't back all the way off of it. I just backed one track off of it, one side. The minute it happened, I knew this is not going to be good. So I tried to get out. I started climbing back up, and that wasn't working because the skid steer is still sliding. Now, you think about it. It's on the side like this, only turned around. So I bury my, I bury my bucket down in the dirt so the skid steer will stay there for a minute. And I've never been in my skid steer, and I've done some crazy stuff, but I've never been in it where I've been frightened. But I got frightened immediately. You know, I buried skid steers. I buried them up where I've had their records pull them out, but I've never been in this situation. I've never done anything like that. So here I am hanging on the side of this cliff like this. And I know if I turn to try to go back up, I could possibly roll this thing over backwards. I don't want to do that. That would not be a fun ride at all. So this is where God comes into play. I stopped with the fright. I was, I was actually scared for just that long. And then I stopped. And I said, Lord, I got myself in a mess here. Two things. Don't let me get hurt. And let this thing land up on its track so I don't have to call a record. Come pull me out of this creek down here, right? But the first thing I did was remember the Kubota instructions. Put your seatbelt on because I never wear it. So I put that seatbelt on immediately. And they say, stay inside the vehicle. So I closed the door, which is, my door is a bulletproof glass, so it's very thick. And you have metal all around you on the windows and everything. So the minute I put the seatbelt on, it was like I took a breath, got my thoughts about me and said, you got to figure this out. But I'm glad the Lord joined in there with me. So when I turned left, I wanted to try to go down the hill. I turned that thing completely over. On its side, on its top, back on its side, and back up on its tracks and four feet of mud in the bottom of the creek. I did have to clean my britches out. <laughs> Excuse me, Lord, but it was that bad. Right? So here I am, stuck in the mud in the bottom of this creek, and it was really deep. So I sat there for a minute because you kind of got to get your thoughts back about you, right? I spilled my Dr. Pepper. My phone went to the ceiling and back to the floor. So I sat there for a minute and thanked the Lord, for, first of all, because I was still alive. And I started pushing myself with my bucket out of that creek, just digging down, pushing back till I got up on dry land. I turn around to come up to this gate, and there's one of the flagger guys sitting there waving at me. <laughs> he saw the whole thing. And the first thing he said, as I said, that was kind of interesting. He goes, yeah, it was. He goes, I thought you were dead. <laughs> well, you're still over there flagging. You didn't come to see if I was dead. You're still over there stopping cars, right? Thank you. He said, but I saw your skid steer start moving, so I figured you were okay. Thank you. Appreciate that. You say, where are you going with all this? Well, you see, I have a terrible problem because I tend to create my own problems by being in a hurry or not focusing and, and not paying attention. Plus, my truck's parked out, Terry shared with me, out in a lane where people were just flying by that could run over at any time if they wanted to come inside those cones. And my wife's told me several times that I need to slow down or I was going to get myself hurt sooner or later. And she's right. But I think it took a bad situation and God to confirm that, that I need to slow down. It took something like that to get my attention. I went to the chiropractor yesterday. 
I kind of had a little whiplash going on there. So the thing is, I wasn't going to tell my wife till I got home because I didn't want to hear it. I knew I was going to get to hear it, right? But thank God we prayed that morning. Thank God that we said, hey, be with us, protect us, and look after us. Like I say, I ask God, don't let me get hurt. Let it land on its tracks. And everything, everything worked out. Have I thought about that any more since that day? Oh, yeah. <laughs> a whole bunch. Buster and I went over and did a job in Fort Worth on Friday. Buster has a skid steer like mine. In fact, he has my old skid steer. And we have to grade this big old hill. Here we are up on top of a hill again grading all this area. But when I backed that skid steer off that trailer, I put that seatbelt on first thing. <laughs> And I let Buster do all the up and downhill stuff. I kind of stayed on top, just kept pushing dirt down there, you know. So God said, slow down, don't be dumb. I kept telling Buster, don't, don't go up that hill forward. <laughs> so I've gotten overprotective. And what's crazy, I kept telling the dump truck trailer guys in the dump trucks, don't back off that cliff. I'm glad they weren't there when that happened. Because <laughs> I would have heard grief for it, right? But I want you to understand something this morning. That God didn't cause this problem. I do believe he allowed this problem so I might become a better listener at what he's trying to tell me. That I would have discernment on the jobs I'm on. Maybe even I could be a witness to somebody else not to do that, right? Sometimes God allows problems in our lives so we might be able to help others. So I told you this story so you don't do what I did. Right? People who have had problems or have problems and have solved them are better able to help others. May not be this dramatic, may be something simple, but you become a witness. And living through trials provides us with understanding and reminds us of our need for a relationship with Jesus Christ. Our own Self-inflicted problems can tend to get in God's way. Instead of allowing God to lead, we want to take the lead away from him and do it our way, right? Anybody guilty of that? Come on. We just want to take it away from God. And what's bad is there are times we'll give it to God and he'll start working on it and then we go take it away from him again and mess it up. And I believe God wants us to keep him close by at all times. And not get too busy to rely on him. You see, he was not on my mind much that day after that morning prayer until I found myself in the middle of a bad situation. And he came into mind immediately. I remembered him instantly, right at that point. I think that a lot of us can get there from time to time. The Apostle Paul says problems are productive because they make us more dedicated to the Lord. And I believe that. 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 10. The Apostle Paul speaking here. That is why for Christ's sake... I delight in weakness, insults, and hardships, and persecutions, and difficulties. For when I am weak, then I am strong. The Lord gives me strength. And troubles and problems in our lives really do strengthen us. And it's hard. It's hard to appreciate trials when they happen, but the benefits are helpful in life to all of us. Do we learn things? Absolutely. Trials in our lives make us stronger and we learn a lot. Self-inflicted problems remind us that we're not completely self-sufficient, right? When we, do, when we have self-inflicted problems that we bring into our lives because we think we don't need nobody's advice, we don't need anybody telling us what to do, and we don't need the Lord. We got this. And the Lord goes, hey, remember me? I'm going to turn you upside down in a skid steer, or I'm going to let you turn upside down in a skid steer, right? Remember me. 
So God has a way of getting our attention. I guess he could allow me to get hurt too. So we have to really understand when God speaking to you and you have discernment on certain things and people are sharing with you because they love you and care about you, you need to learn to listen. I'm preaching to myself, okay? So you know what's going on there. Once two men were sent to a chart of mountain. Each day they went up on the mountain and each evening they returned to their base camp and sat around a campfire talking to an old shepherd man. One evening, the shepherd said, I know this mountain like the back of my hand. Tomorrow, I must go with you so you won't get lost. The men asked, why? We have gone up several times and we know the way. But the shepherd insisted, tomorrow, I must go with you. The men protested. They didn't, they didn't like that at all. And they protested by saying, we have a map. I know, said the shepherd, but there's no fog on your map. So next morning, the two men went up on the mountain, and sure enough, a dense fog covered them. Soon they were hopelessly lost. After stumbling around for a long time, they were ready to give up, when suddenly the shepherd was right there beside them. Is this our story? Is this our story when things are going well, we think we have it made, we've got control, we know what we're doing, but then something happens and we find ourselves lost, separated from Christ, because we, our own pride, big word, pride, gets in the way. That's when we appreciate divine guidance from God. This is why problems make us more dedicated. That's why God allows things in our lives. Now, I, I, you've got to understand, God prevents things from happening. God allows things to happen, and God can make things happen. You have to discern which it is. You know, I have somebody come to you, and they say, hey, God caused me to lose my job. No, God didn't cause you to lose your job. You caused you to lose your job. God wouldn't want you to lose your job. He might allow it if you're not doing your job, right? But we can't blame God for everything that happens in our lives. We want to. But when something happens in our lives that God allows to happen, if it doesn't make us stronger, then we're just out there. We should learn something from every situation. And I'm truly thankful that Terry and I take the time each morning to pray for God's guidance and safety in our lives. Truly thankful for that. Because it gives me a peace when I leave there in the morning that she's protected and so am I. And so are all of you and our kids and grandkids. We pray for everybody's protection, not just ours. We pray for all of you every morning for the same thing that we request for ourselves. That we want you to be safe. But we do want you to have an intimate relationship with Jesus Christ. Are we going to forget sometimes? We get so busy we forget? Yes, I'm guilty of that. But God can get our attention. And he can bring himself back into focus immediately. But more so than anything, I'm thankful, thankful that God joined me in my skid steer and protected me from being injured. Because if I hadn't put that seatbelt on, there's no telling. It could have been bad. It was like a roller coaster ride at Six Flags, kind of one of them upside down rides. It wasn't good. I was more mad about spilling Dr. Pepper all over me than anything. I wasted a good Dr. Pepper. I just opened that can. The question, I guess, is what was gained in this terrible situation that I found myself in? First of all, as I worked in my skid steer, as I told you with Buster Grade in the hillside, God was at the forefront of my mind that morning from the time I left the house. Not only on the forefront of my mind to look after me, but to look after Buster too. Rather, no longer was God just going to, I'm going to pull him in when I need him. I wanted him there before I started. Amen. And God was at that forefront of my mind as I slowed down. We didn't get in no hurry, did we, Buster? <laughs> well, I paid more attention to my surroundings because there was plenty of stuff to back off there. 
That's for sure. Secondly, like I said, before I started in Fort Worth, I put my seatbelt on before I started work this time. So I think that's, a, I, in fact, if I can find somebody to install a three-point hookup seatbelt in there, I'll probably get that like NASCAR people and all them. I'm going to get something that's a little bit more protective. Proverbs, we're going to close right here. Proverbs chapter 28, verse 26. I hope you get something out of it, but this uh, piece of scripture right here, I want you to know I'm talking to myself also. Proverbs chapter 28, verse 26. Those who trust in themselves are fools, but those who walk in wisdom are kept safe. What are you laughing at? <laughs> That's my wife. You encourage her. Pull God close. Get your relationship right with him. Call on him before there's problems. Brother Gary Morgan said it best. Don't break the glass. Call on God to clean it up. Call on God so the glass doesn't get broken. Amen. Let's pray. Father God, we come to you this morning. We lift this day to you, Father. We are thankful, Father, that uh, for your love, your grace, and your mercy that you show upon us. We're thankful for your protection that you watch over us. Father, I pray today that... Uh, myself along with others, that we become more aware of how much you're needing in our lives, each and every minute of our lives. Father, how we should grow closer to you, that you might grow closer to us. Father, I thank you for the protection you provide for this family here. Father, I thank you for the protection you provide for myself, my wife, and our family. Father, let us all be mindful of each other. Let us be sure that we're praying for each other every day. We have a family here, Father, and each one is so important to us that we pray that they'll start to draw closer to you as we do. Father, I pray that you look after each and every one as they leave here today. Keep them safe. Father, we love you. We praise you. We thank you for sending your son to die on the cross to cover our sins and the shortcomings in our lives. And Father, may we be mindful of you and everything we do this week. Father, we love you and praise you. Give the glory to you. In Jesus' holy and precious name we pray. Amen. Well, this morning.